beautiful book. Hold these up, excuse me. Uh, here we are. Here's the original look and learn. Here's the toddler edition, which is so adorable and new. And here is something you might not know about, which is our look and learn prayer card, which is even more ways to use this fantastic invention of look and learn with your kids or any kids in your care. So Casey and I sort of had an email chat last night about how this day would go. So um, Casey, as I mentioned, I'd love to start, um, you know, in your bio, it says it was an idea inspired by the Holy Spirit, but can you tell us like, where did the idea for look and learn come from? Yes, sure. Um, so in mass, you know, we get a little bit anxious about keeping our kids quiet. And I would take this book. I still have it. Uh, we love this book. It's a first words book for kids. And it's a point and say style book, like look and learn. Um, but it has pictures of far a farm scene, fruits and vegetables, vehicles that go. And I loved the style because in mass, I could point to a word and tell it to my son. And then he would look at the picture and study it while I was still engaged as to what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, but then I feel a little funny getting him engaged with something that has nothing to do with the mass, nothing to do with church or faith while I'm participating in mass. So the thought came to me, we need a book like this just with church words. And so it was Sunday after Sunday that I just kept thinking about it and then brainstorming pages and art and ideas. And so I just decided to go for it. And how old was your son at that time? Oh, he was two at the time. <laughs> Great. Yes. Had you thought about writing a book before? No, not at all. Not at all. I enjoy, um, I do not enjoy writing. I okay. like, like you said in my bio, I enjoy organizing uh -huh. and, and seeing this book come to life. It's funny. It's like, I'm not really writing. It's just labeling, which is what I do when I organize things. I label. And so, so no, I had never thought about doing it. It was such a Holy spirit idea and just goes to show, you know, not experienced Googling how to do a book proposal, um, you know, reaching out to, to publishers that were on our bookshelf and just taken care of by the Holy Spirit. And it just came to life and it's so awesome. It's amazing. I do have this flashback memory to when we first started emailing and I said, oh, Casey, I need your author bio. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm an author. And I said, yeah, you are. Now. <laughs> yes. Still, pin still pinching myself on that one. <laughs> How did you decide which words to include and which ones to leave out? Oh, well, that that um, was really inspired, I think, by CGS, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, mm -hmm. which is a faith formation Montessori style that my kids are in. And they do a lot of nomenclature naming things. Um, and so I just I kind of went from there. It started with the on the altar page. You know, the things that you would see, I'm trying to get to it, you know, the things that you would see on the altar. Yep. Um, that, that kind of, that started it off. And then from there, the ideas just flowed at, at our church at St. Joseph in, in San Antonio. We have a beautiful campus mm -hmm. with, we're fortunate to have a lot of land. And so we have, you know, several buildings and a rectory and adoration chapel. So I thought, oh, that would be neat to show. And um, honestly, I thought that, you know, it would be pretty basic. But then as you start thinking things through, you realize there's a lot of words. There's a lot of things to see and know. And so the words became pretty mature. And, um, you know, that's when we, we said, oh, yeah, this is for maybe the older child with the first book. Um, yeah, so it was really just in brainstorming and then you start drawing and and they just kind of came out. That's awesome. Did, did your kids have any say about it? Yeah, so um, during this time, yes, they did. During <laughs> this time, my daughter was, was seven. She's my oldest one. And I remember having, I was having coffee and, she, and we were sitting outside and it was when I decided you know, to start doodling some things and making lists of words. And so we sat, we sat out there together and, and she helped me brainstorm. <laughs> That's awesome. 
And then, okay, so we have, as, as you all saw from what Casey held up, and here's this one, here's the big kids book, the first one. And then here is this delightful board book version, the look and learn for toddlers. And so this, you know, it's amazing. Um, I'm learning so much about board books as Paraclete <laughs> gets more and more of them in our library, which is awesome. But um, there's still a lot in this. Honestly, like this is this is still a very content rich book, even though it's for toddlers. Is there anything you want to say about that, Casey? Yes, I mean, you know, little the littlest kids are essential. They want to know what they need to know. And I think that's that this the toddler edition does a great job of it's it's fewer pages, the pictures are bigger, there's less words, but it's the essential words. It's things that they're gonna see. And, and want to know. And it's just, it's it's cool because you don't need to make, you don't need to change the words. They want to know the, the big words that adults use. Mm -hmm. And and so that's what this the board book does is it just kind of simplifies it for the youngest child. And then it's such a light, sturdy book. Yeah. Um, you know, it's great for a diaper bag. It's great for a baptism gift and little hands can really use it. It really is. You know, one of our... Um one of our, the members of our sales team who has a real heart for look and learn and just loves to tell people about it was on the phone with somebody at a church and she said, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a subtle difference even in the subtitles between these two books. So look and learn words for Catholic kids, look and learn first words for Catholic kids. Mm -hmm. with a and as she was speaking with this woman on the phone, she said, you know, what Catholic parent or educator or caregiver really literally wouldn't want their toddler's first words <laughs> these ones and that is actually a reality if this book is a part of their life and why wouldn't it be you know what I mean like you're saying it's right there it's so handy yes it has its own mission <laughs> yeah my daughter when she when she was four and she was in catechesis of the good shepherd she would come home and she would tell me about her work and she would talk about the patent well I didn't know what a patent was and and I see it I see it every Sunday you know every mass and so you know, it's just, it's so simple to just go along with our traditions and not really know, but then the feeling when you know the words, it's like a different level of participation and confidence. And our kids should have that. Absolutely. Casey, um, so I imagine in your parish, there's probably other moms of young kids too, and <laughs> through your yes. kids' schools and things like that. What kind of feedback have you gotten from Look and Learn? Oh, uh, well, it's really fun to be in church and, and see kids and they'll hold the book up because the, you know, the, the sanctuary in the book is, looks like the sanctuary in my, our parish. And so it's just really sweet to see them, you know, looking up and down and, and um, you know, when you bring it to mass, it's almost like a look and find. And that's something fun too, about how our church is universal. So things that are in my parish will also be in your parish. And um, you know, the kids are just, so sweet about it and and you know they ask questions you know how did you do that or you know who is this and my kid my kids are funny because they're in the choir I drew them in the choir and so you know they are like oh there's little secrets in this book um, about our parish and uh, one time we were visiting a parish close to our home for um, a Sunday and I saw someone with the book that I don't know and that was such a, a cool moment and and their, their son wanted it the whole mass. And you could just, you could just see him thinking and then looking, well, you know, what liturgical color was the priest wearing? And then, and just flipping through and observing the church and comparing it to the book. And it was, it was really neat to see that. I love that. I love that. Um, I would love to just sort of flip through, let's see, maybe we do, maybe we do the original version first. Okay. Just to give people an idea of, of the full, you know, everything that they're getting in this amazing book. Yes. Um, so here we have around the church. And like you said, Casey, I think most parishes have things like this. So how fantastic for kids, whether they're new to church or been there for, you know, their whole lives to see. Yes. Really, here's what everything is. I think I think the thing that stands out to kids is in, on this page is the rectory. You know that the, that the priest has a home and and lives on or near the campus. That's very interesting to them. 
you know, that the priest has a life outside of mass. <laughs> I love that. And even the cemetery, which is something that for kids could be scary, but when it becomes part of your faith life and part of your church and worship experience, that's yes. comforting, I think, and, and important to learn. Yes. I love that. Here's in the church. Is this this your sanctuary that you mentioned? Yes. So this is, it's kind of a combination. When, when I was younger, we had a, a small chapel and we were building a bigger church mm. and the painting of the behind the sanctuary is, is like what you see in the book with that pattern. It's an old German church. And so it's blue with a gold pattern like that. So that's not in our big church anymore, but I brought that in just oh. for fun. Mm -hmm. But yes, we have a, um, an ivory looking crucifix mm. and um, yes the the wooden arches mm -hmm. uh -huh. this is what this is what my parish looks like yes I love that. and the candles and the oils and the baptismal font and all those important parts yes I love it we were able we were able to include the votive candles because mm -hmm. I think that that is just so special to kids it's interesting to them they get you know, the smell of the smoke and the light of the flame, they like to light those photo candles and see their prayers going up. I love that. And, you know, um, a, a lot of, you know, parents, caregivers, certainly so many of the authors talk to say, you know, don't, don't dumb down things for kids. Like there's hard words in this book. They'll learn them and they'll be so proud that they learn. <laughs> yes. And they'll probably come home and teach their parents words yes. that they didn't know. <laughs> Yes, that's what's so funny. It's like, I thought, I really liked that book that I had. And I thought, okay, let's make one that will help keep kids quiet. Yeah. And it's just funny how the Holy Spirit is, kids are quiet in mass with the book, but they have so many questions. So it's getting kids talking. And it's really kind of cool to see that adults, the Holy Spirit is teaching some adults through this too. Yeah. Now here's the spread about the altar. Um, which, you know, if for, for, and for little kids, maybe who haven't necessarily had their first communion yet, I would think like, this is just a taste of like, oh, what does that mean? I yes. want to more about that. I love how there's just enough of a hint on these pages, like you're saying, to get them asking questions and to sort of like fan that flame that's flickering inside them as in their first years in the church. Yes. And this is, you know, the part of mass that I love to re-engage my younger children, you know, look, they're setting the table. Oh, here comes the Roman Missal. There's the chalice. Wow. How many chalices do we need today? Um, the kids that I visited at some schools, they love that the words in the Roman Missal are upside down, but that it's the words that they hear during oh. those Eucharistic prayers. <laughs> oh, that's such a great detail. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, here you go. Here's the next spread with the choir. Oh yes. I love that. And I love how this includes, you know, some churches have more traditional, some churches have more modern. There's the hymn numbers and everything, but everyone's so engaged. What a fantastic yes. image. Thanks. Love it. And the people of the church. I love this too, because, um, you know, depending on, are, are you in a little town parish? Are you in a city? You might not see these kinds of people all the time. Mm -hmm. And of course, the mirror, I think that's so clever for the laity. That's us. We're part of things too. Yes. So important for kids to realize like, wow, like you were saying, the priest is a real person with a real life. He doesn't sleep underneath the altar. <laughs> right. And I think that that's, this is a challenge, you know, for kids to look, oh, there's a mirror. What would I see in a mirror? That would be me. Mm -hmm. And I'm a person of the church, you know, what is my role now and what is it going to be? There's, you know, it's like an unwritten story there. Mm -hmm. And even all the special words for um, the different parts of their vestments and, you know, the bishop is carrying his crozier and it, it's just, oh, there's just so much packed into this. I love it. Mm -hmm. the colors of the liturgy, how fantastic for kids to get to learn this early. I agree. I think, you know, this is one of the things my kids look for first, you know, what is there a change in season? And, you know, usually you have that with the altar decorations as well. Um, yeah, this is, this is really neat. And to try to read through the lists and figure out where we are. Yeah. And I love it. That green is growth, ordinary time. Like you, you've sort of 
taken down the, the essence of the season into one word, which is fantastic. Yes, that was also inspired by CGS. Such, yes, oh. such great words for the kids just to think about. And then I am, um, someone told me, I think it was during the third week of, of Advent, they were so excited that Look and Learn has the rose color mm -hmm. because they can't find a lot of the rose color in other books or products. So they were really excited to be able to show that to their child. I love that. Fantastic. Okay, tell us about this spread, Casey. Oh, I love this page. Um, I just, I think I what inspired this page is simply, you know, that the Catholic Church started the first universities and the first hospitals. Mm -hmm. And when I learned that, that blew my mind. And it's something that we, you know, we just see them everywhere now. So we don't really think about the beginning. And I love to give the credit to the, the church who was there for the people and did all that missionary work in the beginning and just all of the, the resources that are out there. And then I love, you know, the Vatican Central, you know, the, you know, the magisterium is there and, and there's organization to how this universal church works. And um, I don't know, I just think that's neat to think how big beyond my little church is the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. And for kids too, who are thinking, what do I want to be when I grow up? Oh, yes. Realize that whatever that profession and vocation is, is actually connected back to this, to the church yes. faith is so important. And yeah. how amazing to get that concept in so early. Yes. Love that. So important. And here, speaking of, in the home, the domestic church. Yes. Fantastic. This looks a lot like my house. I mean, you can see my bookshelves and my chair and our little prayer table here. Um, you know, I think that this, this is important for your kids to see, um, you know, religious things at home. I know that I, I feel that way when I pray. Sometimes I want to be able to see a beautiful picture or, you know, something to remind me throughout my home. Oh, yeah, God, I'm supposed to do everything for him. Um, one of my, one of my friends, she sent me a picture when her daughter first got the book, she loved this page and she set up an altar at their home and oh. she you know, put a cloth and put a crucifix, put the Bible and mm -hmm. she, she just set up the space and then put the book propped up right, right on there. I thought that was really sweet. I love that. And, you know, I love to hear your spiritual apps and podcasts, even your phone and your iPad are there because how many of us depend on that? It's yes. Life now, isn't it? Yes. And there's so many good resources on our phones and apps. We have to include that. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And the calendar on the wall reminding us of things. And even the family photos. It's true. It's it, there's your family sacrament. There's your wedding photo or your baptism yes. photo and pilgrimage. Yes. Fantastic. Love it. And here we go again. Speaking of the sacraments, what an amazing way for kids to have them all in one place. Yes. You know, I feel like kids will definitely learn this in their faith formation classes. Um, but just a reminder, and I love the, I loved grouping them, you know, in the sacraments of initi initiation, the sacraments of healing, and the sacraments of service. I think that takes their thoughts, you know, to another level. Absolutely. And again, the things, you know, to look forward to, Eucharist, baptism, confirmation when you're a kid, but like, oh, what's going to happen to me when I'm bigger? Right. Thinking about that in this context now, it's fantastic. Oh, and this is such a great page. I, I Identification, but also the prayer being there, I think is just so helpful. Yes. You know, when, when our kids are preparing for First Communion and they're doing their first reconciliation, sometimes the act of contrition is a little overwhelming. So I thought, you know, why don't we put this traditional act of contrition on there for them to practice? And there's so many details on this page. There's, if you see closely, there's Jesus standing in persona Christi behind the priest mm. doing the absolution. And I just think that's really special. And this was a priest that my family likes to go to for confession. So we made sure we drew him in there. And then, you know, the child will notice that the young girl, she's solemn, you know, doing her examination of conscience. And then the boy who is just finished, he has a smile on his face. So yeah, that's me. I, I love the little red sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> just makes it like, this is just part of life. This is just every day. This is what we do. 
And virtues, my gosh, here's the next one. Mm. These can be such big, big, big thoughts. And again, to have them in one place. And um, I love I love the crown and I love the jewels, how you talk about this. You talk about that page, Casey. My sister-in-law, she has six kids now, but at the time she had four girls mm -hmm. and she would tell them, you know, every kind act that you do earns a jewel for your crown in heaven. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, we talk to our kids here at home a lot about virtue, like when they're, you know, in behavior, you know, things you're going to be challenged to grow in virtue. And so uh, that imagery was was special to me because I think, you know, you, you realize you're living now for what's next. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that the vices don't get a lot of space and airtime. They're down here. We know about them. We yes. deal with those so that we can get on to the important stuff. <laughs> yes. Yes. The comfort and the color is above them. Yeah. yeah. Those vices are so, down here. Yeah, we know. We know. We'll take care of that. Get it out of the way. Think about yeah. the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And this is just so beautiful, um, all the different representations of Our Lady. I loved drawing this page. She's so pretty. Um, my, you know, my daughter has a book, I think it's called Our Lady's Wardrobe. And it talks, it, it shows beautiful artwork of all of the apparitions that are in the book and just her beautiful clothes, how she dressed to appeal to the people that she was visiting. Um, this is a very big comfort to children and especially, you know, little, little girls, they love to see her beauty. Absolutely. And <laughs> we'll put in the words that are, that are associated, ponder, Marian apparition, new Ark of the covenant, immaculate conception, new Eve, intercession, all words that are so important, but can kind of float right over your head. So here's an opportunity to really associate them in a way that's yes. um, active and practical and helpful. I love yes. that. And so much can, you know, be done off of this page, like you said, like conversations about those words or um, mm -hmm. research into these different apparitions, which are great stories you know, that in, in of themselves, Our Lady of China, I get asked a lot, why did we, why did you put her in there? And I said, well, my children love her story because there's a battle and St. Michael the Archangel comes and they save the people. And it's, so it's an amazing story to check out. Mm -hmm. I love it. Beautiful. Okay. And this next page, wow. Talk about a, a power packed page here is your complete guide to the rosary. <laughs> yes. And this is so nice. You know, we all want some, you know, one-stop shop when we're ready to sit down and pray. If we're not familiar, mm -hmm. um, this makes it easy. And my son, he's eight now, but sometimes when I go to check on him at night, if he has trouble falling asleep, he gets this page out and he has his little rosary and he will pray this as he lays down at night. I just love it. <laughs> Priceless. Mm -hmm. And the kids are interested in the fact like on the right hand side, which mysteries go on which days, you know, there's, there's meaning in that. And the church thought that through when they, when they thought of those meditations, I think that's neat for kids to learn. I think so too. And, and again, like you were saying, even just as um, for conversation, well, what, what do they mean when they say this? How great to have them all, all the mysteries lined up together here. Um, I just picture myself as a kid, you know, you read something and you get curious and you ask more and you, um, it's just, again, to have this all together in one place. It's just amazing. What a resource. And here we, yeah, this is great. Talk about <laughs> here's the whole bible laid out for you this is neat it looks like a little library with your old testament and your new testament and i just think i i think that's really neat for kids sometimes that big bible is is intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> so to know that you know each of these are little books and and you can break it down and uh, my favorite detail on here are the the symbols by the gospel writers. You know, the you have the the ox, the eagle. Um, it's pretty neat to see those. Love it, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because I don't think you know, it, if you can't see it on the screen, the way Casey has this all laid out, the Old Testament is on top, New Testament on the bottom, 
and the books are, are gathered together and labeled. So the Old Testament, there's the Pentateuch, the historical books, the wisdom books, the prophetic books, and the New Testament. There's the Gospels, the New Testament letters, and the Catholic letters. Wonderful. So, so handy. <laughs> and the map. So fantastic. Where'd this idea come from, Casey? This came from Catechesis of the Good Shepherd as well. My son really resonates with the map. You know, mm -hmm. Jesus was a real person who really walked on this earth, mm -hmm. and this is where he lived. It brings, you know, for, for the child who is visual, it really brings to life this story um helps them to relate and I think it's just really neat to know like okay yeah he was really here and that really existed I love that because when you're listening to the gospels especially you know when they say Jesus was or the disciples and Jesus went to Galilee or then they walked there or the woman of Samaria you don't really know unless you've been there or studied something like that what that means and so even just like the simple labels of here's where this is here's where Jerusalem oh Bethlehem's all the way down here right so and they walked. There's where that miracle happened. Yeah. Yes. They, and the kids love to think about that. Wow. How long did that take? And my littlest son, he wants to know, like, well, did the donkey, you know, have to cross that water? Like he, the, the, they, that even the young ones, they really are interested in that visual aspect. Amazing. Awesome. Oh, and this is a great one. Here's the <laughs> next one, everyone, in the fruits of the spirit. <laughs> That's kind of a cute, just a cute play on words there, but these are, you know, sweet gifts and, um, you know, things to talk about when we, especially when we're talking about those virtues, you know, these are, these are their tools to use as well. And, you know, as a kid, you make so many associations. I think it would just help me remember things better. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was little, um, a certain set of crayons we had and, um, yellow was something like fried yellow is a fried egg i've never forgotten it i still think about funny. Oh, yeah. well look charity is an orange patience is a peach joy you know, <laughs> I, it would help you remember yeah that's neat i love it okay and here's here's the um well i guess there's a couple of grand finales but here's a fantastic one now here's another confession when we were first publishing this book um i guess it's not on this page it's it's on the it's back on the um the um, people of the church and their vestments. We said, well, it's everything from Ambo to Zucchetto. And they were like, what's a Zucchetto? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look it up. But here you have an awesome A to Z, all these beautiful expressions and little illustrations that help bring it right home. This one was fun to, to brainstorm. My kids had a good time with that too it's just it's yeah so neat bulletin canonization what a conversation with canonization and then you know v venerable you know servant of god venerable blessed saint those are things that go together and i love the black on this page when i was when i was trying different background colors the kingdom k the kingdom gates man that really glows with the with the black background it's really neat to see so great and then here we go keep growing oh, this was a holy spirit page we we needed another another um spread oh, yeah. for the printing press okay. <laughs> and so this was not in the original works and i just love it i just love it all the things that we should all do and keep doing and we'll we'll finish and we'll start another thing and we will never stop growing and that's i think that's the key i love it and again it's just like this is just normal life like this isn't just on your best behavior reserved or when you're sitting there in the pew this is like every day all day here's how yeah. we get closer to jesus and closer to heaven yes and i just love it you know the idea of a farm you know, we, we are fortunate. We have grandparents that have a farm and our, you know, my kids love the tractor. They love, you know, the, the, just the seasons and, you know, there's going to be a growing time and a harvest time and just how much of our faith is reflected in the, that natural part of our earth. And that's God connecting it for us. So neat. So many little miracles. Yes. 
Love it, love it. So um, you've told um, we've already talked a little bit about the toddler edition, so we won't go through that one page by page. But again, just to say, same, slightly simplified, but same rich, rich content, just yes. for a little smaller, and whose attention span might be a little shorter. <laughs> yes. But still, you know, just just as sacred and holy. You can see how this page is a little bit condensed, but you didn't miss out on anything. Right. All still there. And then the, the alphabet page is different. The, some of the words are simpler. You know, B for baptism, C for cross. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, yeah, there's different simplified words there. So great. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't show everybody the prayer card. Oh, that was, that's fun. It's super fun. T tell us about this one, Casey. Um, well, so we were just looking for some extra resources that could go along for Look and Learn. And I've been seeing kids with the book in mass and they want to, you know, point and find. And I thought, well, you know, that only covers a couple of pages. So what if we did something around the whole church? And so there's a page on the front, which is just kind of like a checklist for, you know, okay, I see the item and I check it off. And then maybe for the older child on the back, it's, a, it's an activity. There's a, an activity to do for each, each item. So can you find the rectory where the priest lives? Um, take a slide down your church playground or um, ponder the images of each station of the cross light, a votive candle. You know, there's, it's, it's a scavenger hunt, but it's active. I think that that's neat for the little child to get involved. And again, um, even more depth here, gaze upon the beautiful altar in your church and altar is needed for a sacrifice. Just mm -hmm. that simple truth and that simple statement is enough to get a kid's mind and heart really going. Yes. Yeah. And these are awesome because they're, they're dry erase. So you can, you know, use them again and again. I think that's a really great tool. Awesome. We love it. Um, I'll just take a moment to tell everybody about our special for our celebration of Look and Learn, which is today and tomorrow, especially for those of you who are, um, you know, maybe part of parishes. Like we, we've heard a lot of parishes like to give gifts at First Communion time or at baptism time or um, maybe for VBS in summertime. Right now, if you buy, um, I'm going to get this right, 25 copies of Look and Learn you get a free pack of these prayer cards, which they come in packs of 25. So they're so handy for classes. Um, like Casey mentioned, they're dry erase. You can use them over and over. They're laminated. You can wipe them off if they get juice spilled on them or something like <laughs> that. So um, just such a handy thing to have. Casey, you know, as, as a, a mom of young ones, um, I'd love to talk to you just about like, faith at home and how um, I think it's a struggle. I mean, thank God we're, we're, we're coming out of COVID and that is behind us. So I think people are going back to church and, and thank God for that. But there's still that um, faith at home aspect and you have that lovely spread about the domestic church. Um, but what's, what, what advice would you give to parents of younger kids, especially maybe um, for parents who haven't been so involved with their parish or, or, or haven't made such a practice of going to church. Um, you know, you, it, I think it would be tempting to think like, oh, nobody wants to hear my kids crying through church or I can't get them to sit still or, you mm -hmm. know, all of those struggles that are really very real. But it, would, you, would you have something to say to people in that situation? Yes, I mean, I, you know, I think you, we are the first teachers of our kids. And um, my husband always says, what we need to make it our normal, you know, so if, if we want our kids to have a foundation of faith, then, then we need to make that our normal. Um, if we want them to go to mass and be involved, then, then they need to see us doing that. Um, I think, I think we get intimidated when our kids misbehave, um, but not to let that keep us by the, the people who make comments about our kids being loud they had kids and they just want to talk to you. And that's just what they have to say. Um, you know, a loud church is, is an alive church and, and, and the kids are, are involved even when they're little. I think too, we are tempted to say, well, when they're older, then, then we'll start. And I think that 
that the, that the time is now. And what we see in the littlest child is just, they have God with them already. And the desire is there. And gosh, they teach us so much, right? About virtue. When you become a parent, wow, you are learning a lot. And, and the same with faith, they're in tuned with the Holy Spirit. They are virtuous and forgiving. Um, so I think everything that you can do at home is great. Having spiritual conversations, you know, talking about, talking about things that, that are going on in the church, you know, looking at the stained glass windows, um, at taking a tour of your church, maybe after mass, um, so that when your child is sitting there, they don't, they have something to, to, to look at. They're comfortable there. Um, yeah, I just think talking about it needs, you know, books are great and saint stories are great. There's some great podcasts out there for kids to listen to and, um, nighttime prayers, but I think pretty much everything in your child's life, you can tie back to our faith, their, their fear, their, you know, having an, having gratitude at the good things that are happening and, and just talking, always bringing the conversation back to God. You know, um, I know we've talked about this before, but at one point, I think one of our customers said, well, we need a glossary at the back of the book so that we know, <laughs> so that we know what all these words are. And I thought your response to that was, was just perfect. I, do you mind sharing that again? Oh, sure. Sure. Yes. Lots of requests for a glossary. It's nice to know, okay, what is that? But we were afraid that if we just give the answer, which we're tempted to give our children all the answers, we want to be the one who knows everything. Um, but if we just give them the answer, we, we sort of in a way cut off their thinking. Um, sometimes you want your children to wonder and let the Holy Spirit work um, and, and to think about it more. If, and if you're a parent and you have to Google the answer, all of a sudden you're doing a research project with your child. And that is so fun for them to learn with you. It doesn't, isn't there not a power struggle there. That is exciting for a child to learn along with their, their parent. Um, and who knows, like, if you don't know something, you might ask your grandma cause she always goes to mass. And then that's a neat dynamic. You might, you might have a story to tell your child of something that you experienced and if there was a glossary of terms, especially that an older child could read, it, it cuts off that conversation. And that's what's, it's those spiritual conversations that are going to connect us as a family and keep our faith foundation there. I love it. So wonderful. Casey, thank you so much. I'm just going to hold these up again so people can also see what a beautiful set they make together. Um, mm -hmm. You can learn. So awesome. So perfect for, you know, your own library at home, your church library, um, such a fantastic gift too for a first communion or a baptism with the younger ones. Or um, again, we keep thinking about VBS and resources that folks might be needing this summer. So um, I, I just, um, I can't, I can't encourage people enough to take a look and, and really um, take advantage of this special that we're running right now. Cause I'm telling you these, um, these cards just bring it up to a whole nother level of engagement and adventure and excitement in faith for kids. So they'll enjoy doing that little activity. So much fun. Casey, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. Great visiting with you. Thank you so much to everyone who joined us. And of course, we just remind you that Look and Learn is available um, everywhere. We always encourage you to go to your local booksellers first. We always want to support the local businesses. Um, and you can also, of course, order it from paracletepress.com. And like I said, the special right now is 25 copies and you get a free prayer card pack, which is awesome. And um, we just ask you to consider sharing this with other families you might know, other parishes you might know that um, could really use this beautiful, beautiful resource. We want to spread the word. And um, Let's see what else. I know, um, yep, I'm just making sure I've covered everything here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Casey. Thanks to all of you for talking with us today. And we hope to see you again soon. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Casey, take care. You too. Bye-bye.